want to welcome you back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to do something fun. It's going to be right out of the box, something pretty quick. But if you haven't heard of the width tool, that's something you're going to need to know how to use. And so I'm actually going to get a free lunch for this. So I'm super excited. And we're going to create a logo real quick for my boy Marcelo Armenta, who's a real estate agent. We want to make something neat. And I want to use the width tool to show you how to do that. It's going to speed up the process. And when it comes to logo design, every hour or every minute you save is a dollar earned. So really important that we jump into it, but I want to make it easy. I want to make it simple. So we'll go ahead and get started right now. So, okay. So we're going to go ahead and use my line tool. There we go. Bring this up. Maybe we'll pull this probably like to like here. Whoops. To like here, as long as it's straight, then we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, so that's pretty decent. It's not perfect, but I can just hit Command or Control R and line everything up perfectly. All right, so now everything's even. I feel like I have a little bit more space on one side to the other, so I'm going to go ahead and click and drag these and bring these in just a little bit. There we go. I feel like that's a little bit more accurate. All right, so now is our chance to flip this. Okay, I'm going to hit use a stroke. And now I want to show you the width tool. So let's go ahead and grab the width tool, which is right here. So you see shift W you can always hit, uh, but you can go in here and now I can go and do some cool stuff. Look at this. Whoa. I want to make it even on both sides, obviously, but that's pretty neat. It's kind of abstract looking. I can go the same thing here I can make that wider. I can go command or control Z. If I want to undo that, I can go this way either way. Okay, and then if you want, see these little how this little thing drags along the line with you. This is where you can add more anchor points. So if I wanted to click here in the middle and do something even thinner, right? Hit Command Z to undo that. Click here in the middle and go thinner, or I can go wider. Right there we go. I can match it on the same side. Do the same thing. Bring it out. Okay, then we can do the same thing down here. I can bring it out. Same thing here. Bring it out. Kind of an abstract image there. Let's go ahead and remove those guys. I just hit command and semicolon and it just eliminated those. You see this kind of like two arrows going up. I feel like I'm already starting to kind of come up with an idea here. Let's go back to the width tool. We can click and drag these back out, thin these up just a little bit, thin this one up just a little bit. I think they're a little too thick. There we go. Remember, thick lines save lives. I think the saying typically goes thick thighs save lives, but you know, we'll just say thick lines save lives for this tutorial. All right. So we have this, I think this looks pretty good, but I want to do something here that really makes it unique. One of the cool things is it's kind of got some interior shapes, uh, going on that I can see playing with an A inside of here. Uh, but I want to do something really simple and clean for him. So we'll go ahead and put this inside of a shape. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this in here. All right. And we'll flip it. Okay, I'm going to bring this to the back, shift command, and then the little brackets next to the, the P. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do in here, but I just wanted to transform and set it to the back. Shift command and then that little bracket. I don't even know what you call that, but it's not about perfection. It's about progress, right? So let me get this back here. And then I'm going to take that existing drawing. Since we have this in the back, I'm going to hit command Y and that's going to give me my outlines. I'm going to click on my M and hit command Y again. It's going to send it back and I'm going to flip this from black to white. So I can move this up a little bit. All right. So there's kind of like a little icon. Let me make this a little smaller. Well, I think it's just a little too big. When you see a shape like this, we can also use the width tool Now you can't do it on squares, but on this you can. So let me go ahead and add a stroke to this. Now I'm going to flip it one more time to a different color. So let's just increase the width on this, right? So now I can take this tool as well and I can increase or decrease the width on this. See that I can put it up top or bottom. I can add those additional anchor points. So I can click here, right? This corner, and I can make this a little wider right here. I could do the same thing on this corner and make it a little wider or a little thinner. It really adds a lot of depth and dimension. It allows you to do something pretty custom here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go a little wider here, go a little wider here. And then I'm going to go in on these side on this side here. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to bring this in. There we go. See that I kind of got something cool here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and change this from yellow. I just use that as a temporary color. It's probably something more his speed. Almost looks like a spaceman. All right, so then let's see here. Now that I have used that width tool, I've got some cool features going on here. I really like to start my logos in black and white, so what I need to do is I need to hit Object, Path, Outline Stroke. There we go. Now that turns this into a specific object. I can ungroup this, so hit Shift-Command or Shift-Control-G. You can ungroup the whole thing. And I do that a few times, just hit it a few times, and I just ungroup it till it completely lets me ungroup the whole thing. Now I have this background layer separate from the rest of it. So I could pull this out if I wanted to. Now click on this. I can make this match this color and flip it back so it actually gets my, oh, I lost it. So I matched the same style, so I don't wanna do that. Let me make sure that I'm not losing this. So let me go ahead and do this real quick because this has its own width. So let me just go ahead and take this and save this as a swatch. There we go. And then I'll take this right here and I'm gonna add that same color to it. Boom, there we go. So now obviously this is just kind of a logo mark. So let's see if we can do some cool stuff with some lettering. So we got Marcelo, all right, that's his name. And then I'm gonna copy this, hold my direct selection tool, copy this, and I'm gonna use his last name. I'm always gonna separate it because I wanna be able to have it be unique. And then what I'll do too is I'll make one more copy. I'm gonna put both in there. So Maricelo Armenta. So I need to find a font that looks really good. Let's find something that's gonna be close to his style real fast. You're getting to see kind of an inside look. This big Castellan is really nice. I've always liked this font. It's super classy and professional. I feel like it fits his personality really well. Um, let's see here, let me copy this. Whoa, oh, that's kind of a cool idea. What if we did this? This kind of has like a real estate. Ooh, see what happens when you do things by accident? This is an accident. And I think I just found my concept. So let's see, let's go ahead and pull this. Look at, there's all kinds of cool concepts emerging. This is how a lot of my really great designs actually come to be is I do something by accident. So let's see here. I'm gonna pull this out of the way completely. This has kind of a cool like little building look and it has the M in it still. So let me go ahead and drag this up a little bit. Whoops, drag this up a little bit. So it gives a little bit more of that M. And then I can separate his name just a little bit. Make sure it's centered. So I gotta bring that back. Right there. Okay, so now we're centered, we're right in there. And then I wanna bring these lines down just a little bit, because I think that we got something cool here. It almost has like a bow tie look too. There's like a real estate look to it. There's a bow tie. Let's go in here and bring this back up right there. There we go. And I always start my logos in black and white. I just wanted to kind of show you maybe more of his color, whoops maybe more of his color. So let me just go back to the color there. And then this, let me go back to my width tool real quick and make some adjustments. That's pretty cool. All using the width tool. So I just wanna kinda show you one more thing with the width tool, not that this is a final logo, but I'm gonna play with different logo concepts for him and kind of come up with something that's memorable, that's simple. You know, with great logo design, you gotta keep it simple. So let's find maybe one more shape. I really like the egg shape. I really I feel like it's a strong shape. So I wanted to try to do something with it. So let's just go do something with this real quick. So we're gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna flip it to the stroke. Like I did last time, I'm gonna probably bring it to like a three. We're gonna go ahead and grab the width tool. So let's see, let's go in here, just keep it like that for now. Ooh, I see something forming already. Okay, so I already can see something on the ground, so check this out. So I'm gonna grab my, my width tool, and this is gonna be a little bit longer of a tutorial, but we're doing a logo design, right? This stuff kind of takes, takes some time. So let me bring this in a little bit. Let's see here, grab these just a little bit. There we go. Okay, I go back to my regular tool. So now all of a sudden I'm kind of seeing like a plot of land, like an entry point. And then let's see if I could just drag this up into there and maybe edit this right there. I'm gonna use some of my existing objects, which is gonna make it a lot easier. There we go. That's pretty cool. I could also flip it, but I don't think it looks good that way. I think it looks better this way. Oh, 
All right, let's see here. So we'll go ahead and delete this one and this one. We'll go back to the width tool. Let's go ahead and fix this right now. All right, so let's mess with the width tool one last time. Let's turn these black. Boom, there we go. Because there's a little A's and M's in here, but I want to do something unique. So let's go ahead and grab the width tool. Let's try something else. Let's go and make this bigger so we're looking at it closer here. Grab our width tool again. Maybe we do something in here. There we go. Let's bring that in. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and click and drag in here. Let's bring that in. I wanna actually make sure that there's no, there we go. Let's go ahead and bring that in to a point. I might even wanna go in a little, little bit more. It's got a really neat look. If we hit outline on this, we can see we got it centered. So he's got two concepts here that we use the width tool for. Hopefully this helped get a better understanding of the width tool. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. There's so much that you can do with this. I could make an hour long tutorial probably about using the width tool, whether you're just using uh, a straight line, you know, you're using a straight line like this, whoops. And then you're going in here and using your width tool to change it, right? Going out and in, if you're going up from the top, there's just so much, look at that. I made an arrow right there. I can bring this in into a point. I mean, I literally made an arrow in like two seconds. So this width tool is super, super helpful. If you guys have any questions, again, drop a comment to me. I'd love to help you out. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Until next time, keep looking up.